Buenos dias, Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Like a mother, like a motherfucking smack at it. I could do this shit all day. Indubitably, menudo. In a menudo style in direct fashion, as you can tell by that thumbnail, yes, indeed, I'm about to write graffiti on this bus. We're going to get straight into it. Seth, has my brooch? I look. Dark. Just for men. All right, let's get right to it. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. When you're dealing with women, so scared, you're dealing with a monster, right? And back in the days, man, so scared, your boy, you know what I mean? I ain't even going to boast and brag with so scared. I kept it juicy, juicy. I kept it. All right, those are cat. I kept it real juicy, juicy when it came to chicks, man. I was out there knocking them back left and right. Yes, your boy was going to Arby's nightly. Um, but I had a chick. She was from the city of Songhole, man. And, you know, I've already told the story on how I knocked her. I knocked her out the box daily. And I used to call her four text. So I just get one text, you're gone. Two text, you're back. Three text, you know what it is. Four text, she's gone again. That's just what it was. Um, but at the same time, um, I ain't even going to lie, man. I was lightweight in love, man. I was feeling her some, some type of way. And uh, this was about the year 2005. And everything was going good in the hood. She was a hood bitch, right? When I say hoops, I was pants on a theater, man. I'm just keeping it real. She was one of those chicks, man. She got your back no matter what. Here, hold this. So I scared. Oh, that shit burns. I know. I just used it. Don't trip. She was one of those types. She'll hold something for you, allegedly. Um, she'll do a whole lot. She, basically, I was using her to facilitate a lot of moves that I needed around town. And her house was home base. <laughs> I was winning, right? And the winner was. Now, at the same time, she was winning, too, because every now I beat, the, I beat the back out of it. And everybody was happy in the household. It was just a lovely time to be in Merced, California on the West, right? Now, at the same time, about that time, me and the homies from the hood, we were really getting involved in a whole lot of shit, right? A whole lot of ish, right? There was a lot going down in the town. So all these heinous we kept around us, they had to be with the program. You know, they had to be with that business. I mean, there was times and places for everything. And this wasn't the time or the place for no none of that bullshit, right? This was straight up. You got to be with it or against it. And if you're against it, you're not going to be around us. So every heinous that we had knocked recently or every heinous that we had, was with the program and they were down for the cause. They were down for the homeboys. They were down for the pipote langote. They were down. Um, so I remember when I first knocked this chick out of a fucking little bar called Maloney's and Merced. She took me back to her pad. She took me and one of my homeboys back to her pad, her and her homegirl. He was fucking beating them up. You know what I mean? And everybody was happy. Um, but I remember she told me she had a roommate. Okay. She had a roommate from down south who was a Sureña, right? Now you ask to what degree of Sureña? I can't call it. But she was a Surania, and that piqued my interest. Me being a Norteño at the time, it was, I ain't never been with a Surania. I was trying to see what that be like, right? I was trying to see what Southern Comfort felt like. I was trying to see what Down South be. But I never got a chance to see this chick because she was in the middle of moving out. So what had happened was she had hooked up with this Vato. She had brought the Vato over to the pad. This chick came. He was feeling this chick and that chick. He was trying to do a threesome. The one that I was with wasn't feeling it. This was prior to me getting there because I, I would have felt some type of way. I ain't going to lie. Um... And they got into it, her and this chick. They were still friends, but they decided that for no other reason, the other bitch should just get on down the yellow brick road uh, and go to Munchkin land. She should get on, right? Um, So I got there and I see some stuff packed right there. And so I said, you already know how the homeboys do. I'm looking through her shit. And what's up? So I said, Kotex? No, nah, I'm good with that. that. You want it, bro? No, Charlie, bro. What am I going to do for you there for? You know what I mean? So I said, I'm looking through her shit. And so I said, oh, look it. Go check. <laughs> uh-huh. Right? Came up. So she moves. I don't hear nothing more about this chick. I quickly transition into the pad. Now I'm there. I'm holding juntas there. There's hella homeboys. I turned it into a straight gangster pad. I ain't gonna lie. It was gangster's paradise like Coolio shit. The only difference was, you know what I mean? I was a little bit more light skinned and I didn't have dookie braids. Other than that, we were programming as usual. And this chick liked it. She liked being around the hood. She liked being affiliated with the type of uh, characters that she was around. It made her feel extra special. So I remember one night, we used to go to some homegirls pad on the west side this was our nightly routine. So it was like waking up in the morning and rolling your mattress. It happened daily, right? So we used to go to this chi this chick's pad and the hunger used to throw the dopest parties. I mean, hella homeboy, there was a lot of shit going on there. So it's good. Shit I can't speak about on YouTube because you know, block me. That's how vicious it was. And uh, you never knew what you were going to get. So you continued to go there every night. And it just was a spot for all the homeboys to kick it. Like I said, we were utilizing whatever we can get, man. That's a fuck. That's actual and factual. The hood was like that. Where we were going to try to chill. We were trying to get a little mom on it. And at the same time, you know what I mean? A little. And it would never hurt nobody. And the winners were. So this chick is there. And all of a sudden, this chick walks in. 
You know, because there was different hyenas in and out of this house. You never know who was going to be there. But this hyena walks in. And every homeboy's fucking jaw drops like the bottle from mask. Right? This bitch, she's looking juicy, juicy. <laughs> she's looking. <laughs> so I was, I was like, damn, who's that? You're not trying to play the role. Like, yeah, who's that, eh? She was like, oh, that's my homegirl. That's my homegirl, Angela. Remember the one I told you from L.A.? The one that moved out? My old roommate. I said, oh, old roommate, huh? Well, tell her, sounds good. There's still space available. She could move right back in, right? That's how good this chick was looking. She was looking different from the usual suspects, from the usual hyenas that were already there, that were all tirada, pirujas that we had already ran through, uh, like a fucking Santa Fe uh, fucking railroad track, right? I was uh, So I started to inquire. I was very inquisitive back then. So uh, to what degree of Sureña is she? Because at the same time, it's like, is she from Puente or is she from Florencia? I mean, let me know. I need details. She said, no, I think she's from uh, the San Gabriel Valley. I said, ooh, wait, that's even better. It's payback time, that's it, right? For all the times you guys packed me out over there in YA, I'm going to run yours, right? Um, so I said, you know what I mean? Hey, I might not be able to get it, but I could hit a Sureña and throw it up while I'm in it. Bang, bang. I was active and I functioned. Let's go. So anyways, I start to chop it up with the chick. She's there just kicking it. Um, why she was there, I didn't know. I would quickly find out, right? Um, so she was there. And I remember the only thing going through my mind was, damn, look at those motherfucking nipples, right? One time. And the other thing that was going through my mind is I got to find some way to get rid of the hyena that I'm with, that I actually live with, that was actually my, my hyena. Um, how I was going to do this, so I was going to have to use some old Folsom setup tactics, right? So what I did was I quickly started to buy her pistol. Hey, drink that. Because I already knew as soon as she got drunk, it doesn't matter where she's at. She's out, right? I figured she's out for the count. I could move her from here to there. Put her on walk alone. So let's get off to Chicano. She's over there. That's the yard shit. And I'm going to be over here on GP getting active, right? Because I could already tell this hyena was looking me up and down. She was feeling my flavor. And I definitely was feeling hers. Now, I know I sound like a maniaco and a baboso. And the hyenas right now are like, damn, we're shame on you, Gunner. Hey, Spencer. You know what I mean? That's just the way it was about to go down. So anyways, this chick is giving me the googly eyes. You know what I mean? I'm ready for her to fucking download me. And uh, my hand is over there kind of kind of figuring it out. But she's too fucking drunk to know. You know what I mean? Is he trying to do something slick? And Simone, I was. You know what I mean? I'm just being honest. Um, she ends up passing out. It's Christmas time, right? Orale. You know what I mean? Stop looking at boobs and start looking at boob tubes. I was about to look at boob tubes and boobs all at the same time. Orale. You know what I mean? Santana. So I'm right, or Montana, Spansana, did a wrong movie, same story. So trip out, um, my hyena crashes out this night, right? And, I'm, and, I, and I swear to God, me and this hyena, we already knew what it was. This is the North and South connection. This was unity. We was about to get it in, right? As soon as my hyena said, she told the, the homegirl, hey, I'm, I, I'm, feeling, I'm not feeling good. I need to go to sleep. She goes, oh, yeah, don't trip. I'm going to go sleep right here in this room. I mean, when that door hit lock, blah, blah, I told the hyena, hey, what's up? You want to go kick it or go? She was like, let's go. Boom. We got up, scandalous, huh? Don't hate on me. Don't judge me. But the only, only God can judge me. Not even Tupac. So fucking, we went to another room. And I kept it juicy, juicy. Orale, I was gay. I just listened to that song. That's why it's on my mind. You already know what time it is, man. Um, It was different, though. With the South Side Chick, it was different. Anyway, so we got to <laughs> doing our thing. And about after uh, 10, 15 minutes passed, um, we're pillow talking a little bit. And this hyena starts to tell me that she's with some Vato who was a prime target. He's actually a DO at the time. He was a prime target. She fucks with him, right? And I said, hmm, he had the same idea. I, I don't blame him. But at the same time, I'm trying to game. You know what I mean? I'm trying to game her up so I can get, you know, facilitate facilitate some type of setup with this individual. So I let the homeboys know. I get at the home. I was with my shit up. My hyena's in there going. <sighs> I'm like, what? Oh, that bitch snores too much. Right? And I'm over here chilling with the homeboys. The other honey, she's all happy. The other one was like, hey, you think she'll let me hit her? I like, finally, go handle your business. She, he said, hey, she, is she really a Sureña? You know what I mean? To what degree a Sureña is? You know what I mean? I can't call it, but it was, you know, it was bomb. So he goes in there to, to handle his business. Of course, she's down. And uh, she's from L.A., homie. She don't play. Everybody in L.A. got a little bit of thug in them, right? So she was going to, he was going to go thug her. She was going to be thugged. And I start to get at the homeboys like, hey, trip out. I can use this hyena to set old boy up. She fucking, you know what I mean? We could get off you know where we're mad at so the homies are like you got to do that okay what i didn't know and what i'm telling you guys right here first and foremost was she was there the whole time to set me up oh this bitch had tactics so i was she had tactics right so I was, she was going the extra green mile so i was going to mouth open with flies she was going the full green mile to set me up now i ain't gonna lie 
If I get set up like that, that's, that's spectacular because uh, it was a, it was a smooth, the way she did it, <laughs> I can't knock her, right? I can't blame her. Anyways, um, but that was the whole thing. So trip out. I start getting in her ear like, hey man, what's up? Can you fucking get that boy at this spot at this particular time? So me and the homies can fucking talk to him, right? We need to talk to him in a little, you know, in a, in a different type of way. She was like, uh, yeah, I could do that. But what I didn't know, stainless ass movida, this Haina. So I was, I was trying to be nice and shit, right? This Haina was, I keep it juicy, juicy, right? She was over there texting him, letting him know, I got you, I got him where I want him, right? Now, at the same time, she started feeling the pipots. I don't know what it was, but I, I think maybe the homeboy gave it to her a little bit more aggressive than I did because she came out hugging him and all kinds of shit. I was like, damn, bro. Shit, you did better than I am. And I'm working with an 11, right? Um, but she started to lean more towards our way. You could see it. And she was like, look, and then this is what she busted out. She was like, look, I ain't even going to lie. Um, I was sent here for this reason. Bitch, all the homeboys, get your hand off me. Man, what to, to what degree of set? Right? So we're all looking at her like, okay, well, this is what you're going to do. You're going to get him to this particular area so we can just go ahead and uh, talk it out. Talk it out. We walk it out. We walk. We were going to do our thing. And she was down for that. But what happened is she ended up going back to this bottle and he manipulated her and twisted her all up. And so the night that this shit happened, we were ready. So let's get to, to what degree of ready? Huh. The wind was blowing, put it like that, in a menudo style of direct fashion. I was about to catch life without the possibility, right? Um, it never happened, never materialized. But so the black that are watching this fan say you can't get me because I didn't do shit. But I was about to, you know, I was, I was, I was in motion, like Mac Dre. I was in motion. And uh, this vault was in motion as well. And so it gets to the point where she's like, hey, he's at the spot, he's gonna be at my pad. I'm going to tell him I have to run to the store. When I go to the store, you could do it. Now, I ain't even going to lie. Already, I'm already thinking of the homeboys. Make sure that you intercept her at the store. And make sure she hit her with the million dollar dream one time for her mind. You know what I mean? So she's dreaming. I'm dreaming. You know what I mean? She's out of the way. And we'll go ahead and do what we have to do. You know? And the homeboys are like, yeah. So the plan is set. It's like, are you ready? Hike. We're ready to go. I feel like Aaron Rodgers around this camp. I'm about to hit a dime to Devante, right? And everything was good in the hood. I can't say car, even though I'm a Raider fan, because that puta can't throw. So look, everything is good. But she had got this vault on. He's waiting with a house full of gente. Come to me. It's going to be just night, right? So everyone is on the standoff. Well, the vault fucks up. I think he really didn't want that smoke. I think he knew what time it was. I think he broke the hinder to the point where he knew that she was setting us up. We knew that. He, you know what I mean? It was just going to be very ugly. Everyone was going to lose him. The hinder was going to fuck around and dip. With some other South Sider from A-Town. You know what I mean? It was going to be all bad. She's like, I got all the busters, right? It was going to be ugly. And so what happened was, um, he texts me. Motherfucker got my number from the chick, right? That's how scandalous you. I didn't even have his number. I felt bad. He had the upper hand. He was like, hey, you flashy motherfucker. Because that's what he used to call me. He's like, nice try, man. But she done told me your whole little plan. He goes, did she tell, now, did she tell you about this? And he sent me a picture with all his homeboys with wet. like this. I was like, oh, fool. They look like they're having a good old time. So I'm trying to be over there and kick it. But I ain't trying to kick it with no degenerates. At that time, um, they looked like they were really getting it in. There was hyenas everywhere and shit. I was like, fuck, that's the party to be at. You know, um, so the cold moral to the story is, is that the hyena set both of us up. She was playing us both out of pocket and she had so much. Her Arby's was spectacular. I mean, it was roast beef for everybody. Okay. It was like a three for one, not even a two for one. It was like fucking $3 and you get three, plat uh, three platos. It was on a cracking. But at the same time, what you need to understand in life is a chick will set you up. Okay, not necessarily because she was, I was some of the best fucking uh, down south shit I ever ate, you know, did I say eat, spend some, right, that I ever had in my life, um, the homeboys will agree, everybody did their thing, but at the same time, this Heine had some type of agenda, her agenda was, she was leaning back to her roots, she was like, I'm gonna play all these North Daniels out of pocket, I'm gonna get all these motherfuckers to kill each other over some, <laughs> and we were willing to do it, that's the cold part, that's the nature of the beast. That's the nature of a man. Especially when gangbanging becomes involved, your mind gets clouded and all you're thinking about is the end game, that final goal. So I'll just get the final battle. Guerra, war, right? And you're not thinking about who's manipulating who. You got to understand in the game, whether it be gangbanging, the rap game, the dope game, whatever game you may play, man, it's all a game, right? At the end, there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. And this Heiner was going to be the winner and she was facilitating both of us on both sides as the losers, right? So she was going back to her roots. She was like, I'm going to play you like this. Let's get beat down, right? And she almost had us. She almost had us. I'll never forget this situation because um, we were on our way. So was, okay, we were jumping in the car like, okay, can I get in the back? Hey, we, we got room in the trunk. I mean, we were taking homeboys. We were about to go get it in. 
So everybody, vida for everybody. Sounds good. 23 and 1. Orderly Pelican Bay. Let's go. Um, we were ready to go function and get active as fuck. And uh, luckily, the Vato called me, man. To this day, I thank him. So I just got that. I don't like you, but I thank you for giving me that phone call because without that phone call to really bring me up to par and the speed on what this chick was doing, I would have never known. Now, I knew she was in cahoots with this guy as far as um, she was fucking, he was banging her out. And this I already knew. And I wasn't tripping out there because I was, I was getting mine from time to time. You know what I mean? My old lady started to get, hey, she started to notice. She was like, hey, why is she always over here? I said, that's your friend. So I was like, that's your friend. I kept calling when she's always over here. You know, as soon as my hand would go sleep, I keep the juicy, juicy, man, straight up. That's why she's always over here, bitch. Right, straight up. Anyways, in a manual style, um, I just want to tell you guys that be aware. Be awareness. Remember my three words, being humble, having respect, and being aware of your surroundings is going to save you to the next light. If you think that, oh, man, I got this shit sold up. I already know what time it is. Huh? I've been doing this. You can't tell me. Don't tell me. Shit, I don't care, man. You can stand me to jail, man. You think you're all hard like Mac Dre. And what happens? Pop goes the weasel and the weasel goes pop, right? They'll get your ass. You know, so the setup is real. It's just a fucking funny story on how this hyena, you know, who I thought Sasuke had the bomb dome game, was trying to set everybody up. For some reason or another, like I said, eventually over the years, me and the Vato didn't become cool. We never became cool, but we actually had a conversation about it. He was like, damn, bro, she was fucking trying to get you. She was talking about the fuck people was too big anyway. It was used to fucking hit her in the back. I was like, I already, yeah, yeah, I already know that. You know what I mean? That's right off the top. Anyway, yeah, she was telling me that um, at the same time. You, so we went back and forth and had a conversation. And we came to the realization that this honey was fucking both of us up. She was fucking both of us, but she was fucking us both up. And it was just an ugly ugly thing man the setup was actually real she set us both up and it almost went down she almost was able to do that but at the end mm -mm, devil or angel someone was there someone helped me and there's another time in my life where i was able to escape escape peril i was able to escape disaster i was able to win in the game just for that night you know i won about a couple months later i was in prison anyway so it didn't matter for, for beating up the same dude that's how the game goes anyways just never uh, uh, underestimate the other guy's greed or a hyena because at the end of the day, man, she could be doing you dirty. You could think, so I was scared, oh man, she loves me, man. She's trying to help me out. Yeah, does she really? Who can you run to? Definitely not her, man. She ain't fucking with you like that. Sasuke, you just a, a, a crumb cake. That she, she, I mean, you're a crumb cake on the table that ain't able to compete with the heat that she brings. And she still ain't got paid, right? All right, Lee. Anyways, with that being said, I just wanted to tell that funny story about how the setup was real. She actually tried to set me and both this Vato up. And uh, you know how uh, a Surenia man is different. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been with Hainas that call themselves Norteñas. And uh, man, I, I ain't going to lie. It was like going to church's chicken, man. But fucking with this hind, it was like going to Pioneer Chicken. Something good that you just can't get all the time, right? It's different. Anyways, with that being said, I hope that you move fast with a purpose. I hope that you go out there and you get something. Go out there and get it for your familia, man. Don't fall for the setup. Don't fall for the okie doke. Hey, a big button and smile ain't always what it's cracked up to be. So, it's, I mean, if you, if you can get it and then just bounce, then and the winner is, right? But if you try to fucking... Hey, Sasuke, hey, you beat me to the punch this time. And think that you beat him to the punch... Hey, look it. I'm here to tell you, Sasuke, homie, you didn't beat no one to the punch. She beat you to the punch. It. That's just what it is. Anyways, go out there and get it for your family. If you like these spills, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. We're moving on up like the Jefferson Sasuke on Tom's back. We're doing it. Well, let's, all right, please hit that like and subscribe. If you don't like me, you don't like this story, you don't like my content, that's understandable, man. I'm not for everyone, man. Hit that thumbs down. Here is the head that wears this Raiders crown. We're going to continue to strive and struggle all the way to the Pinchy Super Bowl. You know what it is, man. Chicanos, raza, mexicanos, todo Latinos, stand up. It's all about the people. It's all about the hit. It's all about everyone, man, coming together. Black and brown unity. You know what it is. Sprinkle in the white guys just for a little bit of flavor. Menudo on the gun. Bang, bang. And in that motherfucking fashion, she tried to set your boy up.